Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcar.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. Hello to everyone out there in uh, ham radio land. This is KY4BDP Brian for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. Today I'm not bringing you a radio or an antenna, but a weather station. This is the Tempest from Weatherflow, and uh, I've been looking at weather stations for quite some time and uh, watched a video on this guy right here and thought, well, that is a very simple installation. Now, many weather uh, stations that you can purchase will have uh, the ability to, uh, to uh, measure wind, and they have moving parts. There's a rain gauge. you got to clean them out, things like that. And I thought, well, there's a little bit of maintenance here. The Tempest really doesn't require any maintenance, and that was one of the reasons I was attracted to it, because I'm going to mount this up uh, on my roof so that uh, I don't want to have to get up there very often. So let's open up the box. What do you get? Just taking off the lid here, we can see we have a getting started card. Nothing terribly exciting at this point, but once we remove that card, it reveals the actual weather station itself. And you can see it's solar powered. You're going to orient it to the north so that it has an idea of the wind direction, as well as getting a lot of sun, especially in the winter. Plus we have a Wi-Fi base and its power adapter, as well as the mount for a one inch pole. So we've got everything laid out here on the table. The uh, device on the left is the mount so that you can mount this on a pole and it screws up into the bottom of the actual uh, Tempest uh, weather station on the bottom there so you can affix it to the pole. And we also have the Wi-Fi uh, base as well as the power cord for that. I like the idea that it was solar powered. Here we have the base actually installed in my office and uh, very straightforward. It has a blinking green light. You do a pairing similar to what you would do for a lot of devices. And then here we have it mounted on the pole several feet above the roof so that the roof itself won't cause a hot zone on your device. And so far in my testing, it, the, the uh, temperature has been spot on. Now let's get into the application where you can start looking at the uh, statistics and metrics that are coming from the Weatherflow Tempest. Now this is the Windows version and I'm on the uh, weather in the top left corner. You can see it's giving me an idea of what is the the likely weather for today. Thunderstorms possible and you can see uh, 75 degrees feels like 75 degrees in this particular instance. In the top left we have a lightning indicator. Now when you've literally just had lightning nearby that will actually be yellow and bolded if you will but as time goes by it starts to gray that out to kind of give you a visual indication of how long ago it was that the lightning occurred on the right hand side we have the wind speed and gusting and in the bottom middle we have the forecasted high and low for the day plus the percentage of precipitation we also have sunrise and sunset at the bottom. Now this is based on your location, so your sunrise and sunset will be different depending on the, your uh, longitude and latitude within the world. Now I've scrolled down here a little bit, there's an hourly option uh, here, and uh, this gives you an idea of, you know, is the rain uh, chance going to go up throughout the day, and it also gives you an idea of when that's most likely to occur. As we know, weather is not an exact science sometimes. I've also expanded it so that we can take a look at w which direction is the wind going to be coming from and the strength of some of that wind. And as you can see with the green bar and the numbers here, we get an idea it's going to get a little bit gustier uh, in the afternoon into the evening hours as we go through but uh, and then drop off again. That's usually a good indication that you have some kind of a front coming through uh, just from wind in some cases. Now there's not a separate section labeled extended forecast. We have hourly in the blue uh, section header there but as we come down we can look at the 
daily extended forecasts from the day that I ran this particular video out through the week, as you can see here in September of 2020. This gives us an idea of the precipitation chances each day that are currently forecasted and the highs for those days. But if we come down to the next section header, more current conditions, this is where a lot of the metrics are located that weren't up at the top, such as your humidity, your dew point, your pressure, um, pressure levels. Uh, is it rising? Is it uh, falling, for instance? The, one of the metrics that I'm really interested in is the rain accumulation. Not only uh, have I not really had a rain gauge, but this was one of the uh, reasons I wanted to get it, is get an idea of how much rain we receive here at the compound. And lightning strikes. If you come on down from the rain section, it'll give you your lightning uh, last detected in time, your uh, lightning distance detected, how far it thinks the lightning was, as well as uh, the number of lightning uh, strikes within a certain time frame. Uh, that's incredibly important because if you're looking at a front coming through, you probably want to keep an eye. Uh, if those lightning strikes are getting closer, you probably want to do something with your station. Take it offline, unplug things, power off things, for instance. So that's on the main weather screen. A lot of information here, to be quite honest. Uh, I think it's really nice. There's some things missing, which I'll get to a little bit later. Now we're going to go to the history. Um, really nice. Um, missing some things yet again, but uh, I'm sure they can add things in the future. One of the things you'll notice is we're on September 1st here. When I actually ran this, it was September 2nd. So I went back a day and said, well, what were the metrics for weather yesterday? And I can then compare that with today or the day before, for instance. And we've got our temperature, our relative humidity, our uh, uh, sea level pressure, lightning strike count, which I thought was interesting. Nothing in this particular um, uh, screen. And our wind gust. What was the maximum wind gust recorded for that day? Also, how much rain we received. UV index, which can help you, you know, if you need to put on sunscreen, that sort of thing. And even solar radiation, which I thought was an interesting index. Uh, kind of gives you an idea of whether or not it was cloudy that day, if the, rain, if the uh, solar radiation index is low. But let's go to the 2nd of September, and let's see what the numbers look like then. So now you'll notice, on the 2nd of September, we must have had some weather. <laughs> Because if you look at the temperature and all that, that's great. But take a look at the lightning strike count. Day before, nothing. On this particular day, over 100. So this gives us an idea that there must have been some stormy weather going through the area at uh, on the 2nd, as well as, again, a wind gust that was recorded up around 26 miles per hour. Uh, you can obviously change that to kilometers, and I'll show you that in an upcoming section. And we also have our rain duration as well as rain totals. This is the map up at the top. Kind of gives you an idea of where you're located. You can also look at this from a satellite view. This is just the map view. And uh, also you can put that pin exactly where you have the station located, which in my case is on the back of the house up on the roof. Uh, Weatherflow recommends putting this on a fence uh, post or something like that if it's unobstructed. But I have so many trees in and around the compound that I need to actually put it up quite a bit higher. So I actually mounted it to one of the roof gables and got it up above the roof so that it will be unobstructed as much as possible. On the right hand side, current conditions for the station uh, at your location. Now with the settings, you can actually go in and purchase additional stations or monitor different stations. There's also some smart home integrations with Alexa and Google. I don't use any of those. But if you come down into the units of measurement, you can actually change the units based on your area. So here in the United States, of course, we use Fahrenheit instead of Celsius. We use miles per hour instead of kilometers. And we use inches instead of millimeters or centimeters. But if I were in Canada, for instance, I can make those changes simply and easily with these buttons. Very easy to do. Let's check out Celsius quickly here. It was about 75 degrees. Well, what is that in Celsius? Looks like about 24 degrees Celsius. So again, simple to do. It's just a button, and if you want to go back and forth, you can. Sometimes I'll be uh, teaching students that are in different countries, and I'll want to tell them, what's the temperature at my station? Well, I can switch it to Celsius and give them that temperature. That's much more accurate than me just trying to guess the conversion between Fahrenheit and Celsius. Now, here we've changed the uh, uh, wind gust uh, metric, which or wind speed metric, which is kilometers per hour here instead of miles per hour. So that's easy enough to change. Again, if I lived in a different location. 
Let's switch that back to miles here for the United States audience. And then I can also change other things. Um, I think I changed wind direction. Yeah, I went to degrees here, but I didn't really notice uh, a change. I don't know if this is me not understanding where to look for this information, but if you notice for wind direction and all of that, I can't tell that it's in degrees at all. Maybe there's a different area for this, but I didn't find it. So this could be something that uh, Weatherflow needs to have a look at uh, because I don't, uh, I couldn't tell either at the top or in the bottom uh, where the degrees option really made any difference at all. I was thinking like on a compass, 360 degrees, maybe I'm misunderstanding that particular setting. So I'm gonna go back and put that back on basically a cardinal wind direction. In the very bottom section, you also have the ability to do alerts. Maybe you want to know when it starts raining because you have something outside. Maybe you want to know if there's lightning uh, coming through your area. You might want uh, an alert on your phone, for instance. Same thing for the status in case you lose power. And quality control uh, sends statistics back to Weatherflow so that they can make the application better. So not everybody's going to want to turn on the quality control, but I usually do. Or, and at least I did in this particular instance. In addition, if you are having any problems with the Tempest, trying to get it up, up and running or it's not doing what you thought it should do, they have a pretty well thought out uh, support section here and as well as the FAQs or facts about the Tempest weather station. Uh, and so if you need additional help, don't, uh, don't uh, uh, be bashful to come here and look for that info. Certainly you can go up to, uh, go into your favorite search engine and look up the Tempest and see what other people think about it as well. Here we're looking at the FAQ, the FAQ, and a lot of times the information that you need is right here or it will have a link to take you to the next uh, uh, informational uh, portal on the product. So I'm going to go back a few times, let's get back to the main window. I'm going to end the video showing you uh, the screenshots from my phone as well because uh, there's an app for your phone of course. It's all, almost identical to the app here I've been showing you on Windows. Um, so let's talk about some of the things that I'd like to see as we go through some of the phone screenshots. The first thing I'd like to see under history is a monthly rain total. I didn't find that anywhere. I'd also like to see some uh, uh, totals for other metrics for say the month or the week. Right now they don't display that information. The other thing I'd like to see in some of the uh, charting that they uh, provide is trending. Trending for rain for the month, that sort of thing. Uh, uh, are you in a drought condition? Uh, based on the rain uh, flow, uh, totals that you've had recently over a certain period of time. Those things would be kind of nice to have. Other than that, so far I'm really chuffed. It requires very little maintenance, doesn't have to be emptied, and it seems to be pretty darn accurate. I'm going to be checking it over time as well. For the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, I'm KY4 BDP Brian. I hope you've enjoyed this and uh, get out there and get a weather station of your own. 73s.